Hi, I'm Grandmaster Dina Belenka, professional chess player, streamer and content creator. Chess has always been my life. It's true that over the last years I've switched more to content creation. I would say my goal is to combine both competitive play as well as content creation. And this is what I've done so far on my Twitch channel. Playing competitive chess and covering my games, streaming my games on my Twitch channel. And so far people pretty much enjoy it. Chess Olympiad is a very unique competition. It's a very particular feeling, very unique one, very special. And uh, for me, it was an honor for the first time to be able to play the Olympiad, to represent the country. I'm grateful for this opportunity and I'm looking forward for this year European Team Championship that is going to take place in November and next year Olympiads in Hungary. It's a new journey. I would say switching federations for me is like a new chapter in my professional chess life, chess career as a player and I'm looking forward to embrace it. Well, first of all, I genuinely enjoy interacting with chess players and as a chess player myself, I'm truly interested in what they have to say. So being able to catch their emotions right after the game is a great opportunity for me. Sometimes it can look boring. So, you know, digging for content, trying to sneak some emotions out of the players is something that I try to do. And I genuinely believe that it can make our sport more entertaining, attract more audience to it. So. I always try to combine something between like post game questions, serious post game questions and you know, some, some hype here and there, why not? I'm a curious person when it comes to other people. Having these interactions is probably something that I just enjoy in general. And every time I get the opportunity, I am super excited about it, just like here, you know, in Armageddon chess series. It's definitely something that I like about chess, that there are so many ways where you can make your career in chess. You know, you can play, you can be a teacher, you can be a coach, you can be an arbiter, you can be a streamer, you can be an influencer, you can be an interviewer, you can be a commentator. There's so many ways you can make a career in chess and it leads, you know, to all talents and all personalities. So that's a cool thing. The reason I took this challenge was, first of all, to prove myself that I could do something like this physically challenging and easy, I would say. Obviously, it also helped with the publicity. The main message I see there when it comes to chess boxing is that our chess community has grown so much and still we keep this, you know, little bit, sometimes too serious image. So having this events like chess boxing helps us show the world how chess can be fun and entertaining and, you know, brings, brings new audiences to chess. So my premier goal was to take such a physical challenge to see if I could do that, if I was able, if I was capable of doing that. Obviously, it also helped growing my image, my um, brand. But I would say the main goal of chess boxing, the way I see it, is to bring more people, more audiences into chess. And as of today, unfortunately, even though chess has grown so much, we still have this ultra serious image. And the general switch closer to esports and mainstream is definitely something beneficial for chess, something that can show the world that chess can be fun. That's why I support chess boxing and I'm super happy I could be a part of it. I definitely feel stronger, both physically and mentally. I would say the physical strength comes to the fact that I had to train, so I had to, to start some routine, physical routine. Even after the match, I just kept on you know, regular fitness. So I would say as of today, on my 29th year of my professional, um, professional, professional existence, I'm definitely in the best shape of my life, thanks to um, you know this new habit that I gained to do sports on a regular basis, but obviously also stronger mentally because you know taking such a challenge it takes courage, and sometimes I just don't don't even believe that I did it. 
definitely something I'm extremely proud of. When it comes to um, the interviews, I think it's just like for anyone, we all hate hearing our own voice and watching our own selves. I never want to rewatch my interviews, but I know that I have to in order to improve. And very often, somehow, even when I do those bloopers, funny mistakes here and there, it still looks better than what I imagined. The funny thing about chat streaming is that somehow it's the routine is similar to uh, professional chess players because you do not have days of the week or weekends, weekdays or weekends. You do not have working hours or else because you kind of have to grind every single hour and um, the more you work the better is the outcome but it's also important to be there in the moment to stay focused and to always remember what's the main goal of streaming if people choose to go to twitch instead of youtube or netflix it is primarily because they want to get the interaction with a streamer which they do not have elsewhere so the ability to talk to your audience, to entertain and engage them in the real moment, to create the suspense is the most important. And as long as you remember that, obviously mastering it and doing it in the moment is the key to success. We can see it in different angles, but obviously uh, in general, why do people choose Twitch? It is for, for this particular reason. But uh, then of course you have various just chess streamers and uh, just a question of taste, I guess, if some prefer to watch Hikaru or Levy or Dina Belenkaya or Botas or Anna Kramling or, you know, chess dojo life. I would start with saying that preparation to the stream is definitely the hardest for me because I'm not the most disciplined person. But when it comes to the most favorite moments of those, it's funny enough, accidentally, it's the same interaction and that feedback that you get from your audience in life, you know, in the moment, feeling that people are excited to be with you, to spend this, this moment with you. I think one of those things that give you the biggest satisfaction of streaming is when you get to, to feel that energy that people bring you when they talk to you and then you see that they, you feel that they're excited to be with you. And obviously building a community is is something that you can feel proud of and it's a long-term achievement. For me, it has been three years of building an amazing community and definitely something I'm proud of. Preparation for my chess boxing was very special. I only had one month, so the hardest part was to find the right coach. The routine was like three hours of drive and two training sessions per day and 26 years of competitive chess training. I followed the plan and shut down all the potential distractions and anxiety that could come. Most people don't know, but when I compete, I am extremely stressed and extremely focused and definitely the contrary of what I do on the internet. If you actually go check out my channel on YouTube, you will see that lately I started uploading content where I play people in serious conditions and where I do not talk. And somehow my audience likes that. I do not have any OnlyFans accounts. People should be very careful. It's called Passes and it's a PG-13 platform where people get to see more behind the scenes and get the chance to interact with me, but nothing more than that. I just don't see my life without chess. I'm still in the beginning of my content career. In the end of the day, I just want people to say, that's a great content. That's how we want to see chess. The best thing about doing what I do is that I get a very huge desire to train as a player, to get back to the board to compete. I generally want to become better as a player. And when it comes to competitions, obviously it's ups and downs. And in the deeper moments, you know, when I lose painful matches, I just tell myself, 
well, my chest rating rises and falls, but my content rating only rises. You know, all those vanity metrics, number of subscribers, followers you get, it only goes up. You never lose. It's cool that I get the both of these worlds because I never get the feeling of being bored or willing to do something else. Unfortunately, when it comes to content, creating content, it never ends. There is always work. For me, it's hard to take a moment and stop working. I would say whenever I get time, I just try to do some healthy routine, do some sports and just to disconnect because sometimes it gets really unhealthy. The more you study chess, the more you realize how much more there is out there to learn. Just like science, I'd say. My main goal is to improve daily, you know, taking better interviews, doing better streams, making my YouTube videos look more professional, improve my chess, study new openings, get better at controlling my emotions, reduce the trash talking, pretty much everything. That's my philosophy in life. Whatever you do, you should always try to do it better and to be a better version of yourself day by day. I am a competitive person. That's a fact. It's also competition that gives me motivation to do anything. I don't think if I was coming from Russia and Russian chess school, I would ever be as good at chess as I am, even though I would be like top 20 or top 30. It's the competition that makes the field grow and it's the same with content creation. I think I'd be bored if there was only me doing that and I definitely would not find ways to improve. Plus, let me remind you, the best advice a content creator can give you when you're trying to step into the field is to do what? To yonk and twist. You take their idea and you adapt it into your, under your sauce and then you sell it as your idea. YouTube has always worked like this and it's the same for Twitch. Unless you're a genius and you get some, you know, new formats like Armageddon, chess series. I definitely have friends in chess. The hardest part for me is when I'm, when I have to face my friends. Obviously my coach would say, doesn't matter, on the board you play the pieces, but I just cannot. When I, when I get a chance to play with my best friends, I just do not want to beat them. And it's not great. I wouldn't give it as a advice to younger generations. If you manage to separate, that's the best. I definitely have a lot of rivals, or maybe not that many, if you think of it. Maybe a couple, maybe a little bit more. It's an amazing feeling when you get haters. Add some spiciness. It might be so that my personality itself makes people either love me or hate me. Unfortunately, my character, the character that I play of a, you know, Russian villain, this Russian blonde sexy villain is what people see on the outside, but it's definitely not what I am inside. You know, sometimes you try to be extremely aggressive and extremely arrogant just to hide your insecurities or just your, the, you know, the smooth part of you. In the end of the day, I just play the character. Part of making controversial content is getting those comments. Sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're negative. I genuinely enjoy reading negative comments. They make me laugh so much. I stole this idea from Levy, you know, pinning the most hateful comments and see all the army of people defending you. The best part about YouTube is that any comment helps your video, whether it's negative or positive. So sometimes people do not know that they are being, you know, provoked or dragged intentionally into leaving comments, including negative comments. I'd be boring if I'd say classical as a competitor. Although obviously for content, Blitz 3 plus 2 or 5 0 is the funnest. For content without increment, for a chess value, definitely with increment. Karo Khan, come on. Have you watched my TikTok? You want to beat me in Karo Khan? You know what to do. Oh, T, of course, T, T, and T. Hot T, very hot T, hotter than me. My signature cocktail at Berlin Chess Club, Belenkaya cocktail, Paris, the city of love, where my heart is. That is being decided right now, like in this particular moment. 
honestly, as my religion goes, do not create yourself an idol. I can just choose those who I find the most hilarious. So definitely my buddy Anish, my man, grew up together, would be uh, my big favorite. Oh, of course, the Buddha sisters. After all, they are my roommates. If I don't say that, the rent can go really high. Hikaru is a very particular man. I would say, to me, I wish he had more sense of humor because self-roast and the ability to make fun of your own self or to laugh at your own self is a cool thing. I had this moment where I, we, we had a big poster of Hikaru, like two meter poster of Hikaru in paper printed two meter version of Hikaru was in the Bota's house. And first it was a background of Alexandria and then Hikaru asked to remove it because he didn't like the mockery. So what I did was that I took this poster and I put it upstairs into my room, into my streaming room. And I had a couple of great streams until he asked to remove it. Now, the biggest question for me is who I'm gonna put there next. Either Levi or Magnus, these are my options. What do you think? I'm not a Roman general. Unlikely I would be. So I just want to make the best I can out of the opportunities that I get in life and explode my potential, my talents, and we'll see.